Professor Dave and Chegg here. We know how to use electronegativity values to determine what type of bond will form between two atoms. And we know that if the difference in electronegativity between two atoms is somewhere between around 0.4 and 1.8, they will form a polar covalent bond in which the electrons are shared but unevenly. The atom with more of the electron density will be partially negative, and the atom with less of the electron density will be partially positive. But how do we know if a particular molecule that contains polar bonds is polar overall? Let's take a closer look. As we said, if atoms of sufficiently different electronegativities form a covalent bond, it will be polar. That bond will have a bond dipole moment, and we can represent that dipole moment with a vector, which is basically an arrow that shows both direction and magnitude, such that a longer arrow means a greater dipole, or more polarized bond. These vectors point in the direction of the electron excess. We can see here that a BF bond has a longer dipole vector than a CH bond, because the BF bond is more polar. But we also want to be able to assess whether a whole molecule is polar or nonpolar, because if it is polar, it will have a net dipole moment. We can find the dipole moment of a molecule by adding up all the individual bond dipole moments. If there is a net dipole, the molecule is polar. If there is no net dipole, which can happen either if there are no polar bonds, or if the vectors of the individual bond dipoles cancel each other out, the molecule is nonpolar. For diatomic molecules, the net dipole moment is just the individual bond dipole. If the bond is nonpolar, the dipole is zero. If the bond is polar, the dipole is determined by the bond dipole moment. But if we get into larger molecules with three or more atoms, we have to take into account the geometry of the molecule to see how the bond dipole moments will add up. Let's compare CO2 and water. These each have polar bonds, whether CO or OH. But CO2 being linear, when we add up its bond dipole moments, they cancel out because they are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. So CO2 is a nonpolar molecule. Water has a bent molecular shape due to the lone pairs on the oxygen atom that cause it to adopt a tetrahedral geometry, so the individual bond dipole moments point slightly in the same direction. That means when we add them together, there will be a net dipole moment, and therefore water is a polar molecule. If we replace an oxygen atom on CO2 with a sulfur atom, it will become polar because the CS bond has a weaker dipole than the CO bond, so the net dipole will be slightly to the left. Things can cancel out in more than two directions as well. BF3 is nonpolar, while NH3 is polar, due to the difference in geometry, trigonal planar versus trigonal pyramidal, meaning the NH bonds all point somewhat in one direction. This can work for four directions or more as well, and symmetry will be the key to seeing if this is the case. We can look at methane and replace hydrogen atoms with chlorine atoms one at a time. Methane is nonpolar, as there are no polar bonds. But introducing one carbon-chlorine bond, suddenly we have one bond dipole, and thus a net dipole, and thus an overall polarity of a particular magnitude. Introducing another chlorine atom, suddenly the net dipole diminishes slightly, as the two bond dipoles point in different directions, though the molecule is still polar. Adding a third, this effect is enhanced, though it remains polar. And adding a fourth, all the bond dipoles cancel out and the molecule becomes nonpolar. Why do we care whether a molecule is polar? Well, polarity determines certain properties. Polar molecules tend to align themselves with an electric field, whereas nonpolar molecules do not. More importantly, for chemistry, the polarity of a molecule determines its melting and boiling point, its solubility, and so much about how it does chemistry. So we will need to be able to determine the polarity of a molecule for certain properties to make sense. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.